Hello and welcome everybody. In today's video, I'm going to introduce the CST schematic tool. So what is the CST schematic tool? Well, first open up an environment and then click over to this little schematic button located next to 3D. So the schematic tool is a very powerful piece of software that allows users to simulate either 3D objects, well, not really, algebraic models of 3D objects in a very fast and quick fashion. And the most important tool within the CSD schematic tool is this little tune button. So previously in 3D environments, you'll be simulating maybe one design every couple of minutes, and then you'll need to do somewhat of a parameter sweep or an optimization to tune the parameters. Where in the CST schematic tool, you're able to change the parameters of maybe a microstrip transmission line, let's say the width of it, or you can change the, the, the height of the substrate. You can change any sort of parameters. And what's gonna happen, it's gonna update extremely fast. So you'll change the parameters and then you have a full simulated response. Now remember, this isn't a perfect way to describe what's going to happen in 3D. However, it is a good attempt at understanding what each parameter does um, in terms of either micro strip, strip line, waveguide, or just circuit elements. So circuit element filters, for example. So let's get started. You open up your 3D environment and then you click over to the schematic tool, little button here. And then you hear you have a navigation tree, similar to before. But if you click over to where it says block parameter list and block selection tree, well now you've got individual blocks that you can bring into your simulation space to simulate, for example, micro strip. You can have strip line, waveguide elements, and you can click the drop down box to get something like bends, stubs, and so forth, coupled lines. And then you've got circuit elements as well, so you can get um, semiconducting items here, and then you've got circuit elements like capacitors, uh, inductors. Now, if you hold your mouse over it, it should tell you what each single component is. Okay. So let's get into just importing some, some blocks, some algebraic models of, for example, transmission lines. So if you click on ideal TL, well, you can navigate over to this block here, which is a transmission line, and you can just drop it in the simulation. So for example, let's say we're trying to make something like a quarter wavelength transformer. How would we initialize this? Well, if we're matching a load, other than 50, we need to add some sort of resistive load. So we can drag the resistor element into it. And you can click on every one of these blocks and then change the block parameters. Now this on a later version of CST may appear somewhere in the bottom of the screen. And you might need to then click over to another tab to see the block parameter list. But for example, we have some sort of transmission line, remember ideal transmission line. So you're going to get an epsilon value. So let's say we have an epsilon value of four. And then we state what the impedance is and the length in millimeters. So let's go with uh, 4.8 millimeters. I'm going to leave attenuation at zero. And now we can click on the resistive load and change it to maybe something more mismatched. So 500. So we've got a 500 ohm load and then we have the impedance calculation so i can leave it at 50 or i can figure out what the quarter wavelength transmission line uh, form is going to be so it's if i want to match it to a 50 ohm environment let's say we put in 50 times 500 all to the power of 0 0.5 and there we go and then similar to in the 3D environment, we want to add a port or like a waveguide port to the front of it. Click on external port and we can drag that in. And then we're going to need a ground to ground the load. So we put the ground in. Now we're just going to connect every single block in the way we want it to be orientated. So we'll want a straight line and then we've got the load grounded at the end. Okay, perfect. Now, what do we do to just initialize a simple uh, simulation. Well, you're going to click over onto the tasks. Okay, and then something should pop up. And I want S parameters. However, you can go through and see what everything else does. And then I'm going to click OK. 
Now on later versions of CST, this page doesn't pop up. Uh, however, you would then click OK, and then you would wanna click on your S parameters. And this screen here, this information like frequency min, frequency max, should appear in one of these um, you know, boxes down the bottom. So I'm gonna put um, you know, a large range of let's say zero to 10, and maybe I wanna increase the fidelity, maybe 2,001 points. So even this is gonna be very, very quick as well. So I'm gonna click OK. And now the most important thing is to tell the port what the impedance is going to be. And to do this, you want to navigate over to your S parameter block. And here it says it's block dependent. So remember, whatever this little waveguide port or external port connects to, it will match that impedance. We don't want that. We want a 50 ohm port because we're going from 50 to 500. So I'm going to go down to constant and I can leave it at 50 or I can change the value for a real and imaginary uh, constant load over the full frequency spectrum. So I'm going to set it to be 50 and now I can click update and I have my S parameters. So this is perfect ideal transmission line models. So by entering um, the, the quarter wavelength impedance matching formula of Z source times by Z load, and then all to the power of 0 0.5 or square root at all, you can see it's perfectly matched. And now the most powerful tool is the tuning capability. So rather than having a length value, I can just change it to length and then set it to be 4.8. I'm gonna click update one more time. I'm going to go over to S parameters, go back to home and locate the little tune button at the top here. Now you can see my parameters came up in this bottom field here. And I'm going to set the min value to two and the max value to maybe six. And see what happens when I make it smaller? I'm shifting it to higher frequencies. So I'm changing the quarter wavelength of this line and if I want to bring it to a lower frequency maybe I do a max range of 20 millimeters and you can see I've got a quarter wavelength and another harmonic appearing and I can slowly tune it to two let's say two gigahertz just by using the real-time tuner so this is very powerful you couldn't do this in 3d so, so what this tool enables you to do is actually create full circuit systems, tune the values, or even run optimizing code through here. So using the optimizer. And you'll find rather than, you know, making an optimizer run in 3D for 15 iterations, let's say, that may take a couple of hours, you can let the optimizer run for, let's say, a thousand iterations, and it would take maybe about half an hour. So this is all very quick. So then optimize software such as evolution strategy becomes very viable in this sort of scenario where we can punch through tons of iterations. So the optimizer is a very powerful tool in here. So, well, how do you then go from a simple, perfect transmission line to get it into 3D? Because this perfect transmission line is nothing like a microstrip line. Well, first we're gonna close the tuner Go back to block selection. As I mentioned, you can go from ideal transmission lines, and you've actually got blocks that represent microstrip transmission lines. So we can do the exact same environment. So you're gonna get a little arrow block, for example, microstrip and strip line, and perhaps waveguide. And then you're gonna state actually the 3D geometries of the structure. So let's say I'm using, and this is the, the, the permittivity, I'm gonna say like 9.7. So if you're using some sort of Rogers board, you'll put like 3.5 or whatever the Rogers board is, and then it's going to calculate the effective permittivity. For example, height, it's a very thin board, I'm using 0 0.5, as a, and this, this piece of material would be magnesium oxide. Um, I don't have to worry too much about any other parameters here just yet. I can just leave them as stock standard. As long as you're changing the height and the epsilon, that's probably the most important. And then later on, when you get more um, experience with this, you can start um, changing all the other parameters. But that's all we need to get started. Now, I'm gonna go over to the length and 
remember the quarter wavelength that we're making a quarter wavelength transformer what well, it changes depending on the substrate thickness and the permittivity i'm working in so i'm just going to pick a value five to guess maybe i'll leave it as a variable say length um micro strip and i'll make it five reference block is to this block and then the width now if i'm matching to a 500 ohm load it's going to be something very small um because I, I need the impedance value to be something about 150. So I'm going to maybe make it a zero. Well, I can make the uh, it a variable and call it width 120, 155. And then make it 0 0.1, let's say. And then I've got two variables. And I can just copy this sort of scenario. Copy and paste. And connect it all. And now I can have an attempt at creating a quarter wavelength system that matches for this. So what I'll need to do is go back to S parameters and see every single new instant of an external block is going to create it to be a block dependent. I need to change that to constant and leave it at 50. Okay, now I can update the model. Just check that I've got everything in there. Width, I've got a length layer, that's fine, reference block. And then now I can go all the way to my S parameters result. And then here's my S22. And I can now go tune, make the width of the microstrip something very small, and then up to something a little bit larger. And I can try and find where that's going to show a 150 ohm. Remember, 150 ohm load is quite difficult to get on, on the substrate I'm using. So this is a very small value. but it's all theoretical, so I can drive that even smaller. Oh, overshot it just a little bit, and I can make it somewhere between here. Okay, perfect. That's starting to look like a match load. And I can change also the length of the microstrip line now. And I can see how that impacts it. So if I wanted to bring it down to 2, I'm going to have to make it a larger value. And there we go. And then you can play around with parameters like that. So this tool, very powerful to then even create micro strip blocks. So you could take these blocks here, add a length that you've already tuned and add a width, and you could then create it in 3D. So that's what's very powerful about this tool. So if you were to go to the block selection tree, you can create you know, some very unique structures. You could create a, a, a balance line if you want. You know, you could put two ports in here, create a, a balanced network. Let's say you wanted a quarter wavelength wideband impedance matching circuit. You maybe want it third order. You can start connecting everything. There we go. And then let's say you wanted to have a DC block in there as well. So you need some sort of coupled line nature. So sure, we have a coupled line network. Um, and maybe you want it to also be a third order one and two so there we go and then maybe you want to make it a mixing circuit so you can go down to your semiconductors and let's make a single balanced uh, sort of system um, that's asking me to, to make a block um, we would then have to import uh, through, you know, piecewise, spice three, if we've got a touchstone um, of this di uh, diode. Uh, doesn't look like we can actually import it too easily. Um, let's just hypothetically think that's a different element. So let's just use a resistive element. Let's say we had represent this as our diode and now we've got some sort of mixing network and we need also uh, some sort of Wilkinson combiner at the end so we'll create our two transmission lines coming out of it I would need another resistor network and so forth so you can create very large networks and if I click go and I put in all the correct parameters or all the parameters I wanted and click go it would run just as fast as well okay uh, some blocks in the microstrip branch will slow it down. 
I have it, this is still, still very, very fast. And then we can use optimization techniques to then, to, to then, you know, figure out some parameters and, and slowly fine tune it. And then we can take all these individual parameters, remember what they are. We've got them saved in our, in our um, parameter list. And we can go to 3D and we can have a go at trying to recreate that structure. So another important thing throughout this tool is if you're modeling or trying to create a model, which can be then imported into 3D, we need to account for all the little discontinuities. So for example, if you're using a stepped impedance line, like for example, a wide band quarter wavelength impedance transformer, pretend all these lines are a quarter wavelength, then you actually have to account for the sudden change or the sudden sudden change of width between these two blocks. So you need to start spreading everything out because when you create it in 3D and you haven't used these blocks, you'll find that your result's going to be completely different. But if you account for it now, you optimize it in the simulation tool and the schematic tool, then it's going to be a lot easier when you create it in 3D. For example, you know, here's a tapered line. You could do a, a, really, a, a really wide band tapered line uh, transformer. Um, so make sure it account for, for everything. You know, if you've got some sort of hairpin filter that uses one of these discontinuities, um, or you've got some sort of uh, feed block here, for, for example, like a hairpin uh, filter. Okay, um, so, so do try in your own time, have a test around of what every single block does, um, and also click on the help tool if you don't understand. For example, this uh, microstrip branch line hybrid, it starts getting a bit confusing when it asks for uh, like transverse spacing width, uh, longitudinal spacing width. It's a bit tricky, so do uh, look up all of the, what it means through the CSD help tool, which is right here. Have a test around with all the parameters and just see what kind of stuff you can make. And also, uh, this is a very good tool to assist with learning. So if you've also got POSARS microwave engineering, uh, you can actually create most of the examples in here and just play around with the tools. For example, you can also go to the Smith chart and see how an impedance matching tool may change um, on, on the Smith chart. We can click update. Yes, we want to update it all. Uh, S parameters, Smith chart, highlight the second one, and we can also tune and show what's going to happen when we get the width a little bit wrong. Perfect, and if we want to see how the length impacts it, well, DB, I can add a marker curve here, go back to my Smith chart, and there's the marker. But if I change the length of the micro strip, you'll see the marker is slowly shifting around the curve. So now if we're creating a match, it's actually going to be at this frequency of 2.7. Um, so dB linear, if you're a little bit crazy, uh, you got the phase polar, if you want to know what uh, the S2 one, 1, 2 are doing on some sort of uh, polar chart. But the Smith chart tool here and the dB is, is your two powerful tools you're going to use um, to tune devices. Okay, well, thank you for watching this introduction of CSD Schematic Tool.